Hello, Ben Divkid here, and straight to the good stuff, Trace is now available as a DIY kit from Funk. There's a link to it below, and there's also a Molten Music Tech DIY build video, so you can follow along and check out that kit build. That's linked down below too. And to celebrate the DIY availability, what better thing than to make a video that shows Trace as an expander for a range of VCOs, showing it offering new ways to work with your waveforms and expanding your oscillator's capabilities. Here's what's to come. This video is sponsored by me. Go buy a trace, assembled or DIY, go buy a trace. When trace was announced, one of the patches that I demonstrated was using various outputs from a single VCO as the inputs to trace and another VCA waveform as the scan CV, creating a unique audio rate scan effect to make new wave shapes and tones. In this video I want to build on that idea that Trace is a sort of universal oscillator expander where for feedback patching, wave shaping and morphing or even kind of novel approaches to making arpeggios there's lots of ways that Trace can expand the potential of your system and specifically your oscillators. Head back to the first Trace video for a more general overview of the module and features. For now the timing index is on screen and we'll get straight to five patches for Trace expanding your oscillator techniques. Let's dive in. So here I'm waveform sequencing with Trace. You could take the basic sine, triangle, saw wave and pulse wave outs, but I'm using the Soundforce UDCO here or micro DCO that has various octave outputs. It has a minus two octave sub, a minus one octave sub, and then I'm using a saw and the noise here to create patterns in Trace. I have some drums playing, I'll mute these for now. And here's the output of Manic, just used as a basic VCA over the output of Trace. As I open this up, rather than envelope modulate it, here you can hear this sequence scanning through these waveforms. Removing the modulation. And let's remove my volt proctive sequencing for now too. This is the minus two octave sub. Minus one octave sub, the saw wave, and noise. So, opening up my scan CV attenuation, this sequence will control these waves. And you could perform with this so you start from a static input. maybe doesn't hit that noise on the fourth input straight away. And bring up that scan CV in a performative way to introduce new sounds over time. Now closing down the manual level on the VCA and envelope modulating it. This is the pattern that we have quite fun to also invert the modulation and then you'll need to offset it on the slider. As it gives a completely different pattern and feel here. And there's no volt proctive sequencing, this is just the static outputs bouncing between these different octaves of subs and the main wave and noise. And if I start to add the volt proctive sequencing back in, let's go to an arpeggio, just a three note simple arpeggio we can carve into this. It's a three note arpeggio, 16th note CV sequence. It really elongates and develops that three note arpeggio bouncing between these outputs and the noise. 
closing down the VCA again. Against the drums. It's a really fun and musical way to work through your oscillator waveforms. So here we're expanding West Coast complex oscillators, i.e. Buchla 259 variants, with Trace. Trace is feeding waves back into the mind phaser here, adjusting feedback in the wave shaping and the through zero phase modulation. But these techniques would apply to any kind of multi-oscillator, complex oscillator, and certainly ones based on that Buchla 259. We're listening to a filter articulated and affected version here. If I mute that in the mix and we just listen to the main output of the mind phaser, this is the main output on the mind phaser, nothing happening here. And we're routing through the output of trace, modulation that you'll see on the left hand data there, coming in to modulate the amount, the index of through zero phase modulation and the amount of feedback in the wave shaping. And I'm doing that by feeding its own waveforms back into itself. Either the left hand lower tuned oscillator, which is a green trace here on data and green cable, or the main right hand oscillator that we're listening to, the red and yellow cables and red and yellow trace. The first input to trace is nothing, so there's nothing happening. And as I fade up to the second input, this left hand oscillator, triangle there, starting to phase shift and feed back the wave shaping, as I push to input 3, this is the right hand oscillator's triangle, and then to its square, So the mind phaser does all this really aggressive shaping and Trace is going to morph through feeding things back into that shaping. If I modulate with say a sequence and turn up the scan CV, we get these really dynamic shifts and aggressive tones. Again, the aggression from the mind phaser. We could modulate the scan CV with say an envelope instead. You could try an LFO, so slow LFO here that's bipolar, so I'll offset it and just adjust the amount of modulation. If I mute the direct output in my mixer and go to this being fed into a filter and some effects, Let's add the sequenced modulation. So patching waveforms out of your West Coast complex style oscillator into trace, morphing and scanning through them and feeding them back into the oscillator for wave shaping, FM or through zero phase modulation in this case. Here we're looking at a unique way to make arpeggios, but I just want to play a bit before we get into it. So excuse me for a moment.
So here I have some arpeggio type sounds going on that we're using morphing and scanning instead of actually note switching or MIDI arpeggiation or sequenced arpeggiation. We're fading through different oscillators. If I remove my drums, this is the output of Trace. This offset here just opening up a VCA. The first input is the pulse wave out of center here. The second is the saw tuned up a fifth. And then a wave folded sine with some fold modulation. And the triangle. And almost like moving through a wave table. By fading through them, we can create this unique kind of cross-fading arpeggio sound. I have a clocked triangle LFO here relative to my pattern. And as I bring up the scan CV amount from this LFO, we get this kind of up-down style arpeggio because of how these different oscillators are tuned. So if I close down my VCA, and envelope this. It kind of sounds like an arpeggio, but we have this morphing and fading when notes overlap as they crossfade through those inputs. Big wash of reverb. From Bib here, the little spider. If I sidechain this, bring in some drums. We've a fun and unique approach to arpeggio sounds or arpeggiator patterns. So you'll have to indulge me here as one, I really like playing with the free body from Slappy Engineering. And this is kind of an extension and similar in application with Trace to the expanding West Coast Oscillators patch from earlier in the video. I'm taking outputs from Freebody here, routing them through data so we can see them and into Trace, modulating and morphing through them, and then routing that back in to control the depth of phase modulation. And with this wonderful shifting kind of step modulated drone, let me strip it back and go through what's going on. So we're listening to the sine wave output from the central master oscillator. Freebody has a left and right oscillator that can sync to the master one in the middle, which is what's happening here. And I'm routing their outputs, first to data and into trace, and controlling them being fed back in to the phase index. And anywhere you have phase or FM modulation where you have ratios and index, the ratio is the tuning, the relative pitch intervals between oscillators, and the index is the depth of modulation, the amount of modulation. As I turn up the phase index, Trace's output is routing sounds back in to control the amount of modulation with feedback at audio rates. As I shift through these different waves, nice range of different sounds. So if I was to use an LFO to the scan CV, turning that up here, we're just listening to a sine wave. And routing the side oscillators, or the cosine or saw from the central oscillator to control the depth of modulation. And for added fun, I have some step modulation to FM. We can do phase and FM on the free body, where these oscillators are stepping in and out of frequency, modulating each other now. We'll trace morphs and back in to control the phase index. Finally, I have a volt proctive sequence here. a really interesting mixture of the stepped animation that gives this a kind of nice synth riff type feel along with the Volt Per Octave. And that morphing, slow, droning kind of shift 
of phase index modulation here. Adding in some effects, and a final twist of some phase CV knobs. So here we're playing with audio rate scanning of the basic oscillator waveforms you find on most things, but here with the Instro Neoni. A couple of additions here as this is something I did in the first Trace video, the kind of announcement video for Trace, but this is hands down one of my favourite things to do with it. So here's a kind of expanded version that introduces some wave folding into the scan CV and also modulates the level of the waveform coming into the scan CV to more dynamic modulated modulation. I'll strip this back and go through what's going on. Now on the left hand data we can see the inputs to trace our four basic waveforms. The outputs here, we're going through a filter just off screen but it's currently wide open. No scan CV at present. Blue trace is the scan CV, the yellow trace is the output. And as I go through our saw wave to sine to square and triangle and we can of course morph through them and if I place this in the middle we have a wave folded output here this blue trace from Neoni and let's use that as our scan CV we can go in and kind of almost feel like we're drawing new waveforms if I start to fold this wave so the blue trace are coming into the scan. We're imparting this folding into the scan control. And if we start to do this dynamically, I have this going into Manic here and I have a random voltage so randomly adjusting the level of this wave folded output before it comes into the scan CV and I'm also going to take a copy of this random voltage modulating the level to the wave fold amount and let's just listen to that this is what's actually going into the scan CV level changing, fold amount changing sine waves. So using that to scan. If I add in my volt proctive sequence. Now filtering this and adding just a basic clocked envelope, a bit like a low pass gate. Basic audio waveforms and a scan CV that is wave folded from the same oscillator, a whole range of new tones and a lot of fun to be had. Drop a hard sync in the comments if you've got this far in the video and leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see from Trace next time. We've plenty of ideas and videos to come. Head to patreon.com forward slash divkid to support the work that I do and thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.